This is part two, and here we're going to look at float. So the first part we looked at the box model and how we determine the width and the height of elements, but that doesn't, that's not the full picture in terms of positioning. Uh, in terms of positioning things, we need to look at floats. So what float does is it changes the way a block element is laid out by the browser. So let's look at um, how a block element is normally laid out. So normally, um, the block elements just take up 100% of the width that's available to them. If you don't write anything as we did before with a, with a box model. So if I just write a plain old uh, P element, you know, in, so I just write, you know, okay, P, and I have some stuff, uh, and I have a, you know, an H2 in here, and there's some stuff in there. They will both, the width of them will be determined by whatever the, the containing w element width is. So if no, no width has ever been determined before, it's the full width of the page. They'll go all the way across. If you gave, let's say, a width to your body, um, like that, then it would be the width of that body. So whatever they're inside of, they, they take up that width. Um, that's what's meant by the, by the default width. So, um, I put in a containing element like this here, and so then they fill up the width of that containing element. <clears throat> now, um, if I just set the width of these directly, so here we go, on this one we've directly set the width of these blocks, right? So we have a, a different a block one, block two, block three. What they'll do then is just fit that width, but they'll also be all moved to the next line. So I, I forgot to to, to fully mention um, in, in the previous one that um, in addition to getting the <coughs> excuse me width of the containing element, also the other thing that block level elements do by default is they force the next one underneath them, regardless of whether they're a full width or not. So it sort of says, okay, when you're laying me out, I'm a block level element, so the next element comes, you know, after me uh, on the page below me. Um, and so if you just set the width of things, then that's great, they'll still line up like this, uh, they'll just won't be as wide. Okay, so when we add float to them, so here we're in our CSS, we've added float to each one of these blocks. So the HTML, by the way, you know, hasn't changed, right? They're all still just block one, block two, block three, but adding float means now, if there's room after this one is done, so this one is here, if there's room, the next one, instead of being down here, will sort of float up there. And then if there's room for the next block level element after that, which would have normally been here, it will also float up into position there. So that's sort of what floats do, and this is what allows us in, let's say, a grid layout to make columns, essentially. Right, so we float these things and, and give them specific widths so we get our columns in there. And if you're not using a, a grid system like the 960 grid, you can still use this stuff to do layout. Because uh, you can have a normal block level element, let's say, that's like a header uh, and a footer. And then you might have content in here that you've defined widths for and floats and done that. Now to get the space actually like I have in here, you would have to use uh, margin. Right, so I didn't write that down in the CSS here, but you know, block one would have something like margin um, right of 20 pixels or something like that. Otherwise, this other one would be right up next to it, and it would the box would just be right there. Okay, so that's what float does really. Um, now, <clears throat> one of the things that happens here is that if you have a containing element around them, the height is gone. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, oops, I went down to the next one by accident. Okay, um, so let's say I had here just a div that was around all these, and so that would be a containing element. It contains those other divs inside. This div here wouldn't have any kind of height to it, because once these are floated, they move out of the normal way of rendering things, and so this div doesn't recognize them. So it would have a keep its width, but it wouldn't think it had any height to it. And we're going to look later on about how to how to deal with that. The other part about float is that if you keep adding them, so let's say I added a, a fourth um, 
div here. So here's a fourth one. There's if and if this was the defined width of my page, there wouldn't be enough width to put it, so it just naturally comes down to the next level here. So I could add hundreds of these and they would just keep if they're all the same two hundred pixel width, you know, coming out three across at a time like that. Right, so the floated elements just try to try to float up, but if they can't, they go to the next line still. Okay, um, so now let's um, <coughs> look at another part. So let's say I increase the width of one of these. So I just here we increased um, this width to 400 pixels on on block one. Right, that gave it 400 pixels for block one. Um, now there's only enough room for one of these left, so that block two will still go there, and then block three says, "Oh, right," and it moves itself down to the next row, and, and block four goes next to it. So they kind of just reorder themselves like that. Uh, if I decrease this width, I might be able to fit the other one up there, and so forth. So increasing and decreasing the widths will affect the other floated elements if you increase one of them. Now the other thing you can do with floats is you can force the next element to go to a, a, a new line essentially uh, by using the clear property. So in this case clear left has been applied to block 2 which is which is here so instead of being where it normally would be which is right there because it's been cleared it moves down to the next line. And so that's what clearing does. Uh, and if it's float left, clearing left clears it, float right would clear uh, a, fl a float right, sorry, clear right would clear a float right. Uh, and if you're not sure or you want to just be safe, you can also write clear both. And that would clear it whether it was floated left or right. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, let's get back to that containing element problem. So we had that issue where um, if we had a containing element uh, like a div here, it wouldn't recognize the floated elements inside of it, so it thought it had no height. Right? It's like, well, I have no content, so I don't have any height, so I'll just be this little line instead of doing what you want it often to do, which is you know fill out here and wrap around these. Now if you don't use a background color on this containing element or anything like that or background image, it might not even be a problem to you. You know, might not worry about it. But if you wanted for some reason, and this is very common, so let's say have a, a solid background color behind all these different elements here, you know, these were some different callouts and you wanted a, a background color behind all of them, then you'd want to give that background color to this containing element and you want it to be the right height. So this is how the how to how to fix that. And there's actually more than one way to do it. Um, so one of them is using a clearing div. And this is the one I used for the most part with you all in a midterm, which is um, showing here you had your containing class. This often had something like, you know, um, whatever it was applied to. And then these block level elements often were the grid ones, right? So this had grid 4 or grid 2 or whatever inside of it. So then what you would do is you would just add this one here this div with a class of clearing that would have nothing in it, right? These usually had something in it, but this didn't have anything in it. And that clearing class essentially just had this style applied to it that said clear both. So here we go right here. We put a clear in here that says clear both. And so now this element has no float applied to it, and it clears off the other floats. And the effect that has is um, <coughs> that tells now the containing element now all of a sudden says, oh, I see I have at least one element, I have this clearing element, and it's all the way down here, so I need to expand myself to fit that clearing element. So it's still not really seeing these other elements, but it's seeing the cleared element underneath them, and so it expands itself to fit those. And so it grows to fit that content. Now the other one is that if you add an overflow property to the containing element, it will also expand to fit its content. So it's a, it's a nice little trick. Um, and so what's been done here is this is my containing element, has a class of containing, and here we've added this overflow hidden to it. And that would, again, um, make it expand itself to fit 
its content. And this is, I think, becoming much more in vogue now uh, than the clearing does. Clearing does used to be really popular, um, and they're fairly straightforward. You can see what's going on, um, but it adds some markup that you don't need to. Uh, and so this overflow one does it. Now there's some issues with the overflow, and I don't want to get into all of them right now. Um, because there's different types of overflow, so overflow hidden means if if there is for some reason this content goes off over it, it just cuts it off. You can't see it. There's overflow scroll uh, or auto, which would add scroll bars, which usually you don't want to do. You know, you don't want to get a scroll bar all of a sudden in the middle. Although sometimes you do want those, uh, and there's different ways. But that's just another way that you have of now making this uh, div containing element fit the content that's inside of it.